Across the largest minefield in the world, American Marines spy on Cuban soldiers, and Cuban soldiers spy on American Marines. Both sides keep a 24-hour watch along the 18-mile wire perimeter fence which marks the boundary of Gitmo, the American naval base of Guantanamo, Cuba. Guantanamo Bay is probably the last remnant of the Cold War. This base is very different from other bases. We are uh, considered isolated remote. We have no main gate. We cannot go into the civilian population. You are here, you are here. That's it. The base is 28,821 acres, about 43 square miles. We have about 368 miles of road, and uh, that is it. Uh, to get off and on the island is uh, difficult, so you are really isolated remote. That's how different we are. This is a base that has been there for the whole century, the whole century, the whole 20th century. We have had to admit uh, by force the presence of a foreign base in our territory. Maybe compared with a, a base the size of the Rhode Island state, if the Cubans had a base that size in the United States, I would say that the American government could be very, very sensitive about the threat to their national security because of that base. Back in 1903, we signed an agreement with the Cuban government. Both governments have to agree for us to leave, and then we leave. We have no need for it. There's no excuse for us to stay, and it, as a matter of fact, most Americans haven't the, any idea that we are still occupying that base in Cuba against the will of the Cuban people and the Cuban government. It is an anomaly. Most people don't realize that. The base is built on the two sides, on the east and west entrances to Guantanamo Bay. The ship channel running into the city, the port of Guantanamo in Caimanera, runs right through the bay so that Soviet Cuban vessels uh, pass through there all the time. Inspection. <laughs> 400 United States Marines guard over the 7,000 personnel who live here at an annual cost of over $300 million to the United States Navy. Each year, the Navy sends the Cuban government a check for $4,085, the ground rent for Guantanamo Bay. La base de Guantanamo no tiene ningún valor estratégico. Estados Unidos hoy la mantiene como un elemento de humillación para nuestro país. Es una bahía importante, un pedazo de tierra. Each year, Fidel Castro refuses to cash the United States check. As long as we have this last stronghold of communism, then we need to be here. We need to remind them every single day that the democratic form of government is here inside the uh, boundaries of Guantanamo Bay, and uh, just to remind them that we're here every day. And it causes a lot of aggro with them, and that's good, as far as I'm concerned. OK. Our mission is going to be uh, defensive air combat maneuvering and weapons to make sure that you... Go Every Friday, Air Commander Bean gives a briefing start. for practice bombing and raids on Cuba. Nine Mike, all aspect missile. As we uh, pick up the target in our gun sight, either enemy in the field, burst tanks, something that has a relatively large 
dispersion so that wherever we drop is going to be effective. So as I drop, you go ahead and drop on my bombs. Uh, I will try to give you a standby mark. If it's not communicated over the radio, when you see him coming off the rail, go ahead and pickle everything at the same time. This is the real stuff, boys. The U.S. Uh, shows its hostility uh, periodically in these military maneuvers that are held at the Guantanamo Naval Base and in waters around Cuba. Now, these are designed to intimidate uh, the Cubans, uh, to worry them, and they have that effect. They do worry them, but they don't intimidate them. We have amphibious exercises. We have landed as many as 2,000 Marines at the Guantanamo Naval Base. Uh, of course, Cubans are not quite sure whether they're going to just land and remain on the base or whether they come through the fence. We carry out dive bombing exercises on a range at Guantanamo. Those planes come barreling in on their dive bombing runs, and sometimes uh, they don't uh, pull up in base territory. They're well over Cuban territory as they pull up. Stationed in a series of camps along the boundary fence is the Cuban Frontier Brigade. Sin embargo, hay veces que están haciendo alguna práctica militar y violan el espacio aéreo, los aviones. Qué mejor respuesta para esta pregunta de que en estos momentos comenzaran a violar los TA4 para que ustedes vieran que a veces tratan de violar el espacio aéreo y a veces no logran violarlo. Pero sin embargo, eso no nos quita el sueño porque estamos preparados también para tumbarlos si sueltan la primera bomba. No llegar a redir. Pero que nosotros hemos educado a nuestros soldados en que en ninguno de los momentos, por mucha tensión que haya, se les responda al enemigo con un disparo porque nuestra presencia aquí es pacífica, es persuasiva, para que el enemigo se persuada, se esclarezca, se convenza de que debe retirarse porque está de ahí de forma injusta. Lo siento odio, siento repugnancia, saber que tienen ilegalmente un pedazo de nuestro suelo, de suelo, suelo patrio, pero estamos dispuestos en cualquier momento a defenderlo hasta el precio que sea necesario. The Cuban town of Caimanera lies next to the base fence, known throughout Cuba as the first trench of anti-imperialism. Most of the inhabitants worked on the United States base until the gates were closed after the Cuban Revolution. Under the shadow of the Cuban sentry post lives Fedor Cardona. Sacked from the base for his political activities, he watches work on the local air raid shelter. This is a work of engineer, a work of cost. It's a sign of the preocupation that our government has for the population, the elderly and the children. In the schools, they are also doing these refugees, with the idea that if one day there is a problem, because these children have where they are protected from any problem that could arise from the fact that they are not able to do it. The Cuban Frontier Brigade is the first children of Caimanera, the importance of guarding the frontier is all part of the school's songs and dances. Defects 290 Neo announcement. 
All residents in these housing areas should stand by. Repeat, stand by in quarters with one suitcase per person, your dependent evacuation card, your emergency pay authorization, and be wearing suitable evacuation attire. The defense exercises that we have going on this week are designed to train the people in the event that we have to evacuate the base because of some political or military problem that we have. Once we process them, simulating them departing the island and we take them back to their housing areas and drop them off. The last real big uh, evacuation they had was in October of 1962 during the Cuban Missile Crisis, and the evacuation moved about 3,800 people, and it just did a super job getting everyone out of here. We have to be prepared for always, thinking about the worst. Y esa es la seña de que nos estamos preparando y se hacen todos estos refugios y se prepara militarmente a la población. Pues aquí todo el pueblo aquí es militar, caras. Los niños, los ancianos, las mujeres, todo el mundo aquí. Preparándonos para cualquier eventual que haya. In the words of Fidel Castro, every Cuban has to learn to shoot and shoot well. It has that community feeling of living in a very small town but it's definitely small town America. about two minutes away from here, I uh, bicycle. But uh, family-wise uh, oriented, uh, it's real good because uh, safety for the kids, uh, and there's a lot of uh, good people in this base. And everybody knows everybody else. Everybody knows what's going on. Rumor control is great. You can say one thing, and, and it's like a long line of people. You know, you start something here, and by the time it gets to that end, it's not anywhere near what it was when it began, and that's certainly what it is here, too. You know? And they're, they're fun to listen to. The Americans on the base are very curious about Cuba. It's a very artificial and very unreal situation that they spend an entire tour there, two, three years, uh, without ever seeing what's on the other side of the fence. I have tremendous curiosity what it's like on the other side. I have a, a, a emotional feeling about the people on the other side because they are one of the closest neighbors to the United States. They're also the last bastion of real Cold War era. I don't know really uh, how it's on the other side. Uh, I wish I knew. Uh, I hope while I'm here they open the gates so we'll get a chance to uh, go across and really uh, talk and 
be friends uh, like we're supposed to. I'm sure if the gate was open, probably given a few years, it'd, it'd restore their economy a little bit and it be, might be a nice place to visit. When the gates were open, up to 3,000 Cubans worked on the base and lived in the nearby towns of Caimanera, Bocaron, and Guantanamo. They traveled every day across the bay, returning home each evening. After the revolution, the gates were closed. Hundreds of workers were sacked or resigned. Today in Guantanamo City, many of the workers have strong memories of Gitmo. Rolando Quintero worked on the base for 22 years and left in protest at the United States invasion of the Bay of Pigs in 1961. I collect my granddaughter from the Circulo Infantil, which is about the equivalent of a nursery in Europe. It's, it's very nice. It's a very nice. Uh, I wish I had the same thing when I was a child. But I had a very hard childhood. Life in Cuba was very poor. It was a period of unemployment. The best thing a man could do in this region, at least, was to go to work at base. In short, all the miseries that you see in the third world countries now is what you saw in Cuba at that time. From what we hear, uh, this place used to be really popular back in the 1950s. It used to be one of the best Liberty ports that the Navy really had. The first time I visited Caimanera, adjacent to the base at Guantanamo, was in 1940 when I was uh, aboard the USS Arkansas, an old battleship. And Caimanera was a place all the sailors wanted to visit. Precisamente, aquí nos encontramos nosotros en esta área que comienza desde al doblar la calle esquina y se prolonga hacia el final de la calle Marina esta, como se la denomino siempre, Marina Sur. Aquí existía posiblemente uno de los prostíbulos más grandes de, de, de este país, que estaba compuesto por alrededor de más de 70 burdeles. It was a giant whorehouse, a house of ill repute, where nothing but prostitution was practiced and all of the sailors uh, took advantage of it. It was poverty-stricken, it was absolutely abysmal living conditions, and uh, they got a pittance of their money uh, from the, this uh, prostitution. In estos lugares recordamos de muchachos cómo se ejercía eso, y prácticamente era Valga la redundancia, una práctica común. Ese edificio en el pasado era un bar-restaurant. Se, se llamaba el Oasis Room, se le denominaba. Era un bar-restaurant eh, exclusivo para, para altos oficiales norteamericanos. Incluso habían oficiales de menor rango que no podían entrar ahí, norteamericanos. Y por supuesto, ahí no podía entrar ninguna, ningún ciudadano cubano. Y entonces era un lugar de, precisamente de separatismo aquí. We were right at home in Cuba. Uh, we were treated as if Cuba were a territory uh, and we were the territorial masters. The American companies owned everything. 
They owned the uh, Cuba's uh, principal industry, which was the sugar industry. They owned uh, the foreign uh, commerce. We had to sell them our sugar at a very cheap price. And then they sold it back to us at a higher price. They owned the whole country. They not only owned the economy, but they also owned the, uh, the government. It was a total dependency, a total subservience. Absolute. Until the 1st of January, 1959, of course. With the revolution, middle-class Cubans led an enduring exodus to Miami. The United States imposed a total trade embargo which lasts to this day. When Western oil companies refused to refine Soviet oil, they were nationalized. The new government set about transforming Cuba. Life on both sides of the Guantanamo fence would never be the same again. Después del triunfo de la revolución, pues eso fue intervenido sobre el año 60. Y entonces se convirtió en, ese hotel se convirtió en un hotel para todo el pueblo. Actualmente ya eso es un edificio que se encuentra ahí, un comedor, restaurante para toda la población en la parte de arriba. ¿Qué pasa? Que al triunfar la revolución y es ya independizada la zona de tolerancia. O sea, intervenido todos esos burdeles que existían en la parte posterior del pueblo. Y en la parte de debajo se encuentra, por ejemplo, un taller textil donde trabajan un grupo de compañeras de aquí del poblado. After the victory of the revolution, the situation of course uh, started getting tense. It became very tense between those Cuban workers who demonstrated their loyalty to the revolution and the American authorities. Many Cuban workers were arrested, questioned, fired because of their sympathies with the Cuban revolution. They arrested me, oh, about at least seven times. Sometimes they would uh, lock me up and they wouldn't even say anything to me. They just uh, locked me up for hours. Many things happened, which I even don't want to remember. I, I, uh, I haven't been able to shake off, even to this date, I haven't, still haven't been able to shake off many of the things that they made me uh, go through. I must be fair, I, they, they never beat me, they never uh, attacked me physically. But they did exert a very, very strong psychological pressure on me. They asked me would I fire against uh, American soldiers. I said I would be fired into the last bullet if they invaded Cuba. They told me that I was a very uh, uh, ungrateful person because uh, Uncle Sam gave me my, my food. And I told him Uncle Sam gave me my food, but I gave Uncle Sam my intelligence and my work, so we were even. Con la revolución, todo el mundo trabajó. Y ese es el cambio que yo he notado, que antes todo era robo, todo era malo. Malo, malo, para el pobre muy malo. Yo fui feliz cuando empecé a trabajar en la base. Como ganaba dinero, ayudaba a mi familia, que era muy pobre también. Yo me quedé 15 años trabajando ahí en la base, en la peluquería, en el mismo lugar. Dejé de trabajar en el 63 y después pues me he sentido bien. Desde que triunfó la revolución yo me he sentido bien, con pasando necesidad, pasando esto, pasando lo otro, pero yo 
no quisiera que por nada en la vida esta revolución se acabara. Yo quisiera que floreciera más bien. Fidel Castro was losing a lot of uh, friends. Uh, all of the communist uh, uh, strongholds or holdouts, if you will, here in Central America and in the Caribbean region are falling. Uh, I think he is the last one. Uh, the uh, Soviet leadership is giving him a hard time. They're asking for hard currency beginning in January. Uh, Fidel Castro is in a difficult position. Independientemente de que decíamos de que mucha gente dependió de la base, por necesidad económica. Hoy el pueblo de Cuba dice que eso ya ellos tienen que irse de ahí, porque además eso es de nosotros. Y nos duele incluso ver cuando se ondea la bandera americana ahí, a todos los cubanos, y todo, desde los niños hasta los más ancianos, nos duele ver cómo flamea la bandera norteamericana en un pedazo de tierra nuestra. Así les dolería también a ellos si flamearan una bandera foránea en territorio norteamericano. Es una cosa evidente. I would say that, based on the world communities, uh, acceptance of democracy and, and free enterprise that we will stay in a place like this until all people have the right to choose their destiny. Yesterday we buried one of my best friends, uh, Rafael Infante. Uh, we started to work at the base on the same date, in late uh, 1940. And uh, we shared uh, our ideals, our revolutionary ideals. And on the date of the uh, invasion of uh, Playa Giron, we left the base together. And uh, we came together to face the enemy, to fight for our country. So uh, he was very close to me. I, I loved him very much. April the 17th, 1961, the Bay of Pigs. US-backed mercenaries invaded Cuba. That same day, Rolando Quintero resigned. To commanding officer, Naval Supply Depot, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. I hereby resign my position as a Liddyman Stockman Technical Stores, effective from this date. It is also my desire to express that I take this decision as a sign of protest against the aggressive attitude taken by the government of the United States against my country. I think the controlling image of the United States uh, is of Fidel Castro, a bearded pipsqueak who smoked cigars, or used to and who has jeered at us and kicked us in the shins for 30 years and got away with it. The mercenaries were captured and relations between Cuba and the United States became increasingly strained. We are the unforgivable ones. They will talk about everything, and, uh, peace and all things with uh, the Soviet Union and uh, uh, whatever is left of the socialist bloc, but they will not talk to Cuba because uh, they want us to go back to them on our knees and beg forgiveness for being such naughty boys. And we are not going to do that. On Guantanamo Naval Base, more Cuban workers resigned and were sacked. When the gates finally closed, some Cubans decided to live on the base. Families were split as they left behind wives, husbands, and children, never to go home again. We have uh, probably about 148 Cubans that are on, uh, on the station here. These are Cubans that stayed here after the gate was closed. And at 5 a.m. each morning, two Cuban buses take a small band of commuters to work. 32 years after the revolution, they're the last few Cubans still working at Guantanamo Bay, working for the United States Navy.
Ya te como los tres cuartos, vamos a estar abierto aquí para. Ya ven, bien. Okay. Okay, that's the last of them. Go ahead and now shut the gate. Every morning, 30 Cuban commuters cross the Guantanamo fence line on their way to work at the United States Naval Base. Granville Duffus lives in the Cuban village of Bocaron, 200 yards from the fence. He works every day in the store's supply department on the Naval Base docks. I've completed 46 years. I'm now going in my 47 years of service. And I have no complaint. I have no complaint as far as the, the American side is concerned, and I have no complaint as far as the Cuban side is concerned. All I do is just go to work and take care of my job, and that's all. I have never been afraid of living over here. I've never, because if I, if I was ever afraid, and I, it's, it's very easy. You can go over there and you can stay there. That's it. But I've never been afraid. My brother, he used to live in, 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 in Cayman era, and he used to go to work. But then he decided, he got over on the base, and he decided to stay over there. OK, Bambinos, we're going to take Granville used to travel to work with his brother Patrick until 30 years ago, Patrick decided to stay on the base, to leave his family, and never to go home again. That's it. Here we go. Say French fries. French fries. Here we go again. Say banana wrap. Banana wrap. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I can see. Yeah, the light is really bright. I used to work here. I used to commute. But when Castro took over in 59, I had to stay over here in 60, 1960. And because he claimed that I am a security threat to his government due to the fact that I work for security over here. And I left my wife over there with my five years old daughter. In those days, everybody was waiting, you know, he soon fall, he won't be there, oh, we've been waiting. And when I see two years, three months, then I made a connection and my wife came over the fence line with my daughter. What she did, she threw my daughter over the fence line and then she followed after. And she, when she came over here, she was all full with cactus all over and all our clothes torn up. They came over practically naked. I got here. This was the shoe she, my daughter was wearing when she came over the fence line. She was then eight years old. So I got it here as a momentum. I use it as paperweight. Yeah, let me see what we have here. Oh, two beautiful kids. Look there. That's a nice picture. All right, like good it? job, guys. Pick out which Let one you want. See. Look. See Josh? There's Steven. There's Josh. There's another one. Yep, there's the other one. Yeah, I left behind my mother, one, brothers, or four brothers. Thanks. My father also. You're welcome. And mother and father died over there, and I couldn't go over there. But I could see my brother because I got a brother that commute. I've been working there so many years, and I decided to continue working until I am up for retirement. And as far as the government here is concerned, they never did tell us not to work there. They did not interfere with us. I don't communicate to, with him too much because uh, it may get him in trouble. I work for security, someone may see him talking to me, and they will think that he's bringing news to me. See, and we just, I'll see him and just say hi, and I'll call him on the phone and talk with him and things like this. But now, a conversation is always about the family, but as far as any other type of conversation, we don't end. It's just a family reunion, and we, we talk about families and so forth. 
It made me feel sad because he's the eldest one. He was the one that brought us up, you know. I could even take him to my home to have lunch, but I don't do that. And he don't want me to do it neither because he can, get his, he can lose his pass and never able to come back over. See? So it's sad. I don't look at them, uh, what he has and what I don't have, I mean. I just live as comfortable as I can here because I'm right here in my country. I prefer to be here. See, so I think I'm, I'm better off than he is. On Guantanamo Naval Base, Patrick Duffus now lives with his wife and granddaughter. It's very safe here. So we got permission to have her here, you know. We don't have no drugs, we don't have no crimes, we don't have nothing here, and she can go to school, you know. And sometime I reach home, uh, she's not home, I don't got to worry, I know she's over a neighbor. And uh, due to the fact that my wife only speaks Spanish, my granddaughter is seven and she speaks both language fluently. I think I'm fine here because I'm living with my family. Since the revolution, we have had lots of changes. They have a very good health care here for the children because um, they don't charge anything for it. Their education also is free. Because before the, before the revolution, I had my kids that were going to school and I had to pay. Now, you don't have to pay anything. It's free. Thirty years ago, Granville's brother Patrick went over the fence illegally. Today, the Cuban Frontier Brigade makes sure the fence is no longer breached. Less than a dozen people a year make the journey. Nosotros, a principio de la revolución, lo sabemos por la historia de que hubo algún intento bastante sistematicidad en el intento de fuga ilegal del país. Pero en estos tiempos son realmente ínfimos los casos de fuga ilegal del país. Puede ser que en algún momento algún elemento antisocial o desafecto de la revolución trate de irse de forma ilegal por aquí, por, la, por el perímetro que nosotros defendemos. Y el que intente también caiga en la mano de los, de los soldados de la Brigada Fronteriza y por supuesto se pone en mano de la justicia revolucionaria. People do occasionally come across that fence. More would if they could. Others can go by boat 90 miles north of Havana and uh, escape through the Keys. And they do it all the time. They want freedom. We are that symbol. We have always been that symbol in the Caribbean, Eastern Europe, wherever. Today, Cubans are notionally free to travel, but the United States law still forbids its citizens from visiting Cuba. 
Meanwhile, up to a thousand Cubans go illegally by boat each year to Miami. My personal opinion is that less people want to go across than they used to. Because many of the people who've gone across, they have written their relatives. They have given them outlook of the situation there, which is not easy. Most people know what the uh, big uh, paradise is like. Today, the propaganda war has intensified into the war of the airwaves. We have Radio Marti and now TV Marti, and those two communication systems are bombarding the uh, Cuban people with information. Buenos dias, Cuba. Transmite TV Marti, servicio especial de televisión para Cuba. De la voz de los Estados Unidos de América. Now the fact is, it isn't received, but we're going to go ahead with it anyway. Uh, it seems to me that that is not rational, and in a sense, it reflects the anger, the frustration of the United States uh, that we will go ahead, spend something like twenty million dollars a year on a TV station uh, that will never be seen because the Cubans jam it. Guantanamo is one of the poorest provinces in Cuba. How can you invest in a place where you have an American base which is hostile to the Cuban government and to the Cuban people uh, nearby the area of the harbor? So the question is that you cannot make huge investments in a place that is under threat. Tenemos también la cooperativa de pescadores, donde esa cooperativa no puede desarrollar un plan grande de, de, de captura de peces porque tiene sus limitaciones dentro de la bahía, una delimitación partiendo del mismo hecho de la presencia eh, de la ocupación norteamericana. As uh, Fidel has always uh, said, uh, we're not going to get back that territory through force, but uh, we know that they will have to give it back to us. And I have an uh, expectation that uh, in my lifetime, I expect to go, go back there and uh, take a look around again, just to take a look around. At the end of the day, a US naval bus takes the remaining Cuban commuters who still work for the United States government back to the fence and the Northeast Gate. Under the watchful eye of the United States Marines, they walk the one and a half miles across the minefield to the Cuban fence line. Each year, their numbers dwindle. They will not be replaced. After a second security check, the Cuban buses take them back to their homes and families. We go there, we work, we don't get mixed up in politics. And we, we work, we come back home, and we just take it easy. One day you're over there and you know you're being uh, watched. It's really funny. You feel kind of a, like a freak, you know? Yeah, on the base we are paid in American dollars. And according to regulations in Cuba, we are supposed to take our earnings to the Cuban bank to change it. So in paydays, the bus takes us direct from the gate to the bank. No one is allowed to be walking around with dollars in their pockets. It's prohibited. And that is to prevent the black marketing of the American dollars.
it represents one of the very last positions of the communist world. And I would like to know that they have or will have sometime in the near future an opportunity to live a, a lifestyle that is more commensurate with the, the rest of the world. I mean, it's time to get on board. It's time to move on. I regard it as a good life. At least I'm living in my country. This is where I was born, this is my country. So I, I prefer to go to work and come back every evening and here I am with my family. He is satisfied with his life over there and I'm satisfied with my life over there. I'm a US citizen and I'm living freely. I bought my house in Clearwater, Florida. I may do about two years more. Then go to Clearwater, Florida and do a lot of fishing. I'm just going to enjoy life. Good evening. I'm Petty Officer Chris Haddox. The Defense Department has called more Air Force and Army reservists to active duty. That's one thing I would like to go and visit, you know, just to visit the place where I used to run up and down barefooted. I would take off my shoes and run up and down, look for my old friends, if they are still alive, you know. I would love that. That's one thing I always have on my mind, you know, just to go to visit my hometown, where I was born and grew up. My hope's been up so many times, and then it's come down and up and down and up, so I don't know what to believe now. See? Oh, eventually the Americans will give up Guantanamo, eventually uh, the United States will reach a new accommodation with Cuba. That may have to uh, await Fidel Castro's demise, or at least his political demise, because not because Fidel Castro is unwilling to reach an accommodation with the United States, but because I think uh, the United States is simply psychologically unprepared to reach an accommodation with him. Right now, I can guarantee you that the Americans are not going to leave. And I think, politically, it's important that we stay here. I really do. And I don't see why the Americans wouldn't be proud of being able to return the base to the Cubans. That would give them the opportunity to be fair one time with the Cuban people. <laughs>